Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm here today to talk to you about rocks and minerals. I'm also going to kind of whiten your appetite a little bit with rocks and minerals and go into them some and then I'm going to afterwards uh, uh, kind of go off into more specific topics. This is a multi-video series over the course of several days. First thing I want to get into is what the difference is between a rock and a mineral. A mineral is a, is a specific collection of molecules that uh, bind together covalently, meaning they share electrons and bind together, to form a particular substance that can then crystallize to one degree or another. And crystallization does not require a full crystal all the time. Not the way you think of a crystal. Believe it or not, metal like that makes your car, for example, is technically crystallized. It doesn't look it, but it really is. All right. Here, let me give you an example of a mineral. Hematite. Mineral. Yay, mineral. See? This is actually a mineral. If there were, if this uh, mineral and another mineral, let's say fluorite, there's a piece of fluorite, if the two of them were combined together to make a specific stone that had both of them in little pieces all mixed up together, then that would be called a rock. Because a rock is a collection of dissimilar minerals. Well, not really dissimilar. I mean, they can be similar, but what I mean by dissimilar is they're not the same thing. They're not, they're not the same. If they were the same, they'd be a mineral. Okay. There are three forms of rock that exist in the world. They're igneous rocks. And a good example of an igneous ro ro rock is granite. Here's granite like you'd find just sitting out in your parking lot. This is, in fact, that's where I got this piece. Stupid piece of granite. There's nothing amazing about it. These uh, lighter colored uh, lines in here are probably made by quartz. The black marks you see on it are made from hornblende. The duller white marks are made from uh, uh, feldspar. And the shiny little sparkles you occasionally get off of it, are, uh, they come from what's called mica. Those are the four components of, uh, of granite. Quartz, feldspar, hornblende, and mica. Most of it, about 70%, is usually, uh, usually feldspar. Anyway... Igneous rocks are made by fire, lava, that sort of thing. Not not actually fire, that's where the word comes from. But they're made from uh, molten magma and things like that. Over time, uh, 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 sedimentary, which I'll go into in a minute, rocks, are converted into igneous rocks. Amongst other things, not always. That is not always the truth. But anyhow, uh, the probably the flagship piece, though, is granite for igneous rocks. The next type are sedimentary rocks. Here's a piece of sedimentary rock. See that? Sedimentary rock, yay. Sedimentary rocks are made by things that sink to the bottom of the ocean, rivers, lakes, streams, like sand. And what happens is when the little granules get close together, other elements and things grow in between them, like calcium, for example, or silicon. And those crystalline formations bond together the little tiny granules and create what's called mesolithic rocks. So that that's what a mesolithic rock it, rock is. Here's a piece of petrified wood, which is a mesolithic. I'm not sorry, mesolithic. I'm saying mesolithic now. Sedimentary. This is a piece of uh, uh, of uh, petrified wood, which is a sedimentary rock. It's specifically called a cryptosilicate. You can see all the little tiny colors in it. Little tiny itty bitty crystals of every conceivable sort of sedimentary thing you could possibly imagine that are in it. That's what causes sedimentary rock. So sorry, I said mesolithic a minute ago. I was off of my own world there for a second. So, anyhow, let me see if I have another piece of anything around here that's definitely... Like here, this clamshell is a piece of uh, sedimentary rock. This clamshell is about 100... Uh, sorry, it's about 50 million years old, and it's from the Eocene period. How do I know it's from the Eocene period? Because I sent it with a bunch of other ones from a dig I did back in 1985 when I was quite young. Um, I sent it to the Smithsonian, who sent me back this letter. See? 1985, if you can read, Smithsonian. And it had all this information. And it talked about uh, these rocks and told you everything about them. It had dates and information on them. So they actually figured out what these were and let me know. All right. The middle type of rock is called the metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rocks are rocks that are changing, becoming something else. Uh, let me give you an example of a metamorphic rock. Look at this guy right here. All right, 
you see in the on the one side here you have this the, the this uh, particular rock here what is this looks like probably some kind of calcium or something but you see this this growth of crystals that occurred on it this is what was called a contact mes uh, a contact metamorphic rock contact metamorphism uh, occurs when when things like magma touch calcium and cause immediate crystallization because of the heat the kinetic energy that's in them so this came from uh, probably calcium deposits in the ocean that got hit by magma and met uh, metamorphic is kind of an interesting sort of rock it turns things like slate for example into other things eventually uh, calcium is a, a major player in this take for example um, marble or limestone growing calcite this is this is what happens with mesolith uh, metamorphic rocks I like to point out for a second the reason I keep saying mesolithic every five seconds is because I've been studying the mesolithic and Neolithic periods for a really long time. Mesolithic and Neolithic are time periods involving humanity and people. But for some reason, I cannot seem to stop myself from saying Mesolithic, which has nothing to do with geology. Metamorphic. There we go. Now I've said it. Here's some interesting samples I was going to show you. This is mica. I've seen people with tiny pieces of mica that are really just lies. This is real mica. This is a real piece of mica. This is an awesome piece of mica. The little tiny window that exists inside of my Geiger Mueller tube right here has a piece of mica on it as well. I got this mica from Ruggles Mine, New Hampshire, when randomly I was there. So I figured it was a possibility I might find some radioactive uh, material on it since they used to get uranium from Ruggles Mine. But not a thing. Trust me, if there was some, some uranium uh, uh, ore of some variety, like, you know, pitch blend or something, or... I would know it, and I would know it, like, big time. It would be going nuts on my, on my Geiger counter. And you know, some other classic stuff. Here's a piece of quartz. Yay, a piece of quartz. Notice the shape that it grows in. I'll get into shapes later on with gems and stuff in one of my other videos. But shapes tell you a lot about what a, uh, what a crystal is. Here's a Herkimeyer diamond. Herkimeyer diamonds are not real diamonds. They're actually uh, pieces of quartz that grow so clear that you can see all the way through them see you can see right through it all right here is an interesting little guy um i think that that is a piece of iron it's not particularly radioactive none of my stuff here is piece of iron probably i told you iron grows in a crystalline form uh good old-fashioned amethyst you've seen my bigger pieces of amethyst uh here's an interesting guy that's growing uh uh uh, what is that stuff called? Malachite on it. The green on it is probably malachite, although it could just be copper formations as well. Whenever you have a, a mineral growing inside of another mineral like this, it's called an inclusion. <clears throat> and if, uh, let's see here. It's a nice little guy I found when I was in Oxford Hills, Maine. Notice the black. The black material right here is a uh, horn blend. The greenish material, which you probably can't see in the video, but right here is a greenish material, is probably some variation of aquamarine, which is perfectly fine to find in Maine. Trust me, you find rubies and gems and all types of stuff in Maine. And then, of course, there is the old, uh, oh, what is this thing called? Geode. See the geode? Yay, geode. All right. Now, that is kind of like the first introductory lesson for mineralogy. You have rocks and minerals, and now you know the difference between rocks and minerals. You have sedimentary rocks that come from things that form on the bottom of the, of the, of the oceans and rivers. Sediment. Sedimentary. If you apply lava and massive amounts of pressure and heat, they will become metamorphic rocks, which then create neat little crystalline forms like this. And over time, lava, as it comes out of the ground and hardens and cools, and crystals grow into it and such, will become uh, igneous rocks, like the outside of this guy right here that just happened to grow these crystals in the inside of it. And this crystal on the top is a mineral. So is this, and so is this. The collection of them makes a rock. When they're by themselves, they are called minerals. So there you go. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Remember to keep a Geiger counter always on, because if it's not on, it's not registering anything. Always have your log books. You can write stuff down. And I'll uh, get back to you guys later.